um, or a handful of large accounts that may be um, delinquent to try and get a sense of if that 50, I think it's 56%, um, if that's reflective of any greater economic trend in the, in the community. Um, I think it's good news. Um, so, I, you know, again, your, your efforts this year and under the weird circumstances we've been operating under are um, appreciated, but I'm just trying to get a sense of if the numbers tell us anything else. Yeah, so when I first, so before I closed out um, September, I was trying to um, scan and see if there were any really large accounts. Remember, I was telling you about certain accounts. I was eyeballing to see if they were there. And most of the accounts, I, and I usually look at the real estate because those are the larger money and that's the ones I want to draw in really quick. Those, it, it was mainly anywhere between one and $3,000 accounts. That was the meat of all the delinquency was that. I had a few large accounts, but they came in. You know, um, I have one that's, um, what was it? Our, our, hold on. RWN, that's a that's a large one, that's on Nine Thompson Road, um, but they they owe eighteen and nineteen, so they're going to be up for tax sale if they don't come through soon. Um, but you know, not we're not talking three hundred fifty thousand dollars. We're talking you know, they owe thirty six thousand dollars, so they're they're not in the big big category. Yeah. Um, I don't have anybody that's in that large, that large category. So they're, any, anybody else have any questions for Patty? Marie? Yeah, Patty, on um, the communal lip report that's dated September 20th, that first column, if you compare that first column to the communal lib report of cash for July 2019, uh, can you explain the difference? How we can be 2% higher on collection of taxes and almost at 100% for the fire department? Um, the total tax collected report for that column for July was 16361925 it looks like. Versus two million five seven. So the issue is, is that so I told you that July. So I told you that our September is really our July. Right. So that's why you're, it's going to be skewed. So the numbers for September are much lo lower than they are for July. July we get the meat of the money in for all the banks and everything. So that's why you have like the, you know, the $16 yeah, million. Affected by, um, the banks weren't affected by the October change because right. anyone that they had to be in, in July. So that's why the large money was in in July. So Marie, for your purposes, you want to compare between the sheets, the net cash collection um, to get a snapshot of the core of the, the half year payment that what Patty is showing in this year is what was collected in September compared to what was collected in July in previous years. To draw the apples to apples, you want to compare the net cash collection. Oh, before, we didn't get the October money yet, which is going to be the bulk of it. Right. Got it. I don't, yeah, I don't have that okay. in yet. All right, got it. And then one other question, the sewer benefit assessment. Yeah. Um, what, is, what is that? Because that wasn't um, collected last year or years before. Yeah, it was. Well, it's not reported. Ever since yeah. I've been here, it's, it's been yeah. collected. Um, you may not see it um, like in, in July because that's not a really active month for them. Their, okay. their, their collection starts in September. So, so what, that, what is that? Collection. What is that? The sewer, benefit. Um, sewer benefit is for like the, the pump station. It's the benefit of using the pump station. And the, this is all for the WPCA. Yeah. The uh, FCC is for the pipe that goes from the house out to the street. So there are two different charges that I collect for the WPCA. And, that's, As, oh, and that's the general answer to your question, Marie, is as a matter of practice, we provide a number of services to the WPCA um, for collection. That's uh, probably 
well, one of the examples that jumps out at me and Patty can add others is that um, we incorporate any outstanding um, payments owed to them when we do tax sales. Yeah, um, yeah. So we collect for them uh, and don't charge them any legal fees for it. Um, so that's. Okay. So that's like during a tax, yeah. So during a tax sale, I would collect any outstanding facility connection, any sewer benefit and sewer usage. Okay. So we, we collect everything because it benefits the town and it's our attorney that's doing it. The town's attorney, they get free legal for, you know, my, my efforts in, in doing this. All right, thank you. I just didn't, wasn't aware mm -hmm. of the clarification. Thanks. Sure. That's something we might look into down the road. Something you guys need to really think about and we should have a discussion about is, um, and very soon is if um, Broadbrook is um, voted in as a district or however you want to call it, we need to determine how we're going to set that up because it's yeah. not going to be something I can do overnight. It, I, it's going to require some work, a lot of work on my part to get that set up. Expect that that'll be a conversation at the second November meeting in case we don't actually know the results by the first November meeting. You should have in place how you want it, you know, applied and adjustments and all that. That's a conversation we, we really should have in place so that if it's voted in, you can just hit the ground running. Yep. Other questions or comments for Patty? So I, I just want to draw, in case it's lost on anybody, um, the collection rate this year was was robust, um, and that's without the benefit of having issued a tax sale so far. Um, there there is the opportunity for that number to go up as those tax sales are now able to be restarted. Um, Patty is uh, has at least had conversations, if not has started the process of issuing a tax sale. So. Um, we're kind of getting back to a little bit of, of business as usual, and that number could be even more robust um, when that process is executed. Charlie. Did, I don't know if any, if you know the answer or not, but did we see more or less in appeals this year over last year's? Um, I didn't. I think we just had motor vehicle appeals. Yeah, we just did motor vehicle and there there were maybe like a handful of them. There were not a lot of them at all. That becomes we're we're midway through a grand uh, through a, a reval. Um and that becomes once you have appealed during a reval, you can't appeal a second time. You're stuck with whatever that appeal decision is for the life of that reval unless you take it to the until unless you take it to court. So because we're midway through, there's not a lot left that would be litigious that hasn't been already appealed. Does that make sense? Other questions or comments for Patty? I thought this was an important conversation to have, particularly in light of the year that we were in. Um, when the budget was first put in place and the uh, deferral was, was put in place as well, I had very, very real concerns that, you know, we were going to be dipping into or depleting the fund balance to keep the lights on. Um, and I, it's just so great that that didn't come to be. Um, I just, I wanted to make sure that the board was aware of where we stood. And I also wanted to make sure that you all are, are aware that um, Patty is lifting quite a load uh, on behalf of the town and certainly is appreciated. So um, if there's nothing else for her, uh, Alan. We just I'd like to say thanks, Patty, for the heads up on the fire department work that we got coming up. We'll definitely keep that in mind and get right on it. Okay, thank you. So we get passes. Okay, thanks. Have a good evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appropriately, we are now on to tax refunds. <laughs> Is there a motion? Selectman, I'll move to approve the tax refunds totaling $1,798.45. Second. 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 
Is there a second? Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Okay. Selectman's reports. Um, last week, we started the phase three of Connecticut's reopening. That includes indoor facilities like restaurants, hair salons, and libraries now able to open at 75% capacity. Outdoor venues uh, are now able to open at 50% capacity. Um, and we're also seeing indoor performing arts centers opening at 50%. For private group gatherings at commercial sites, crowd sizes can now increase to a maximum of 100 people indoors and 150 people outdoors. Indoor religious activities uh, can now increase to 50% capacity up to 200 people. Guidelines are still in place to require the wearing of masks, social distancing where, where possible. Um, and they're certainly still encouraging that you wash your hands frequently and stay home if you can. Um, as, despite going into phase three of reopening, we are also seeing some concerning numbers in Connecticut's cases being reported. Uh, and then the metric that I pay closest attention to isn't the number of tests or the number of confirmed cases, it's the number of hospitalizations. And those numbers have been growing at a concerning pace in the last couple of weeks. We're now at almost 200 people in Connecticut that are hospitalized with COVID-19. Um, so as we start the, the next process of reopening, which now includes about 95% of all, all activity, um, we need to be very vigilant that there is still we're still in troubled waters. Um, the town has, as of today, uh, received 2,049 absentee ballot requests. Um, and of those, 1,054 ballots have come back already um, for a total return rate of 51% uh, versus those that are issued. Everyone who was requested an absentee ballot uh, also received um, a document explaining the four additional questions on the charter or on the, the ballot the first three of which pertain to the charter. The fourth one pertains to the uh, Broadbrook Fire District Ordinance. Um, we've wrapped up submissions for our winter edition of the Five Village Voice, and we've had more submissions for this edition than we have had previously, which is awesome. Um, we're encouraging outside groups as well as town departments to participate and to promote the wonderful things that are happening here in town. That publication should be arriving in homes sometime around Thanksgiving. Parks and Recreation has continued developing creative ways of providing fun, safe activities. They have been holding weekly in-person activities every Thursday. Tonight's was a pumpkin painting activity, um, but for each of those, pre-registration is required. Uh, on October 29th, the town will be holding a drive-through trick-or-treat event at East Windsor Park with more than 20 town departments and local businesses hosting booths. Uh, they also have, are completing their Healthy Kids Running Series for children between 2 and 14 years old, um, and that'll be wrapping up next week. Um, I actually asked Melissa how you get a two-year-old to run in a straight line, and she said that it's a very short race. Um, so we also will be or have resumed in-person yoga, um, which also has a Zoom component to it, so people can choose to participate either in person or from home. Uh, Social Services is finishing up their renter's rebate program for the year and are already working on processing energy assistance applications. Anyone interested in determining their eligibility um, or applying for assistance can call Social Services uh, at, their, at their main line. That's all I have. Everything else uh, we'll talk about in executive session. <laughs> Marie. Yeah, I don't have much. Um, I economic development commission on the 6th and the Broadbrook mill site um, meeting that was scheduled for the 7th both were canceled um, I did on the 6th I attended the Broadbrook fire department um, commission meeting I guess call it a commission meeting um, took me longer to get there than I was able to attend because they went into executive session um, after they approved the minutes so I don't have much to offer other than that I um, read on Facebook that they promoted three individuals on um, the following morning. So I'm assuming that must have been the nature of the executive session. Um, so I just kind of went um, just to see, see the meeting um, 
to replace Charlie. Um, and hopefully um, I can reach out before I go the next time to get copies of their previous minutes and copies of their agendas um, and maybe get introduced to the people that are there so that they know who I am sitting in the back of the room versus those that were sitting around the wrong time. Um, and that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Alan. Um, I guess what the most important thing I have to give you uh, is from the Wetlands Commission. Uh, Wetlands had a fairly light meeting this last uh, time around, but work continues on the fee ordinance, the Wetlands Fee Ordinance. Um, pretty much everything is all in order with the ordinance and the fee schedule and uh, all the supporting documents. So right now the commission is working on a presentation that will kind of sit in the hopper for when we are able to have a, an actual public meeting to, uh, to vote on the ordinance. So we will not be doing this via executive order or Zoom or any of that. We'll be waiting for this uh, to be uh, an in-person public meeting. So I'm just getting all the work done and making sure it's all uh, ready to go and, and then it will be presented in the future. So that's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you for your work on that. I know that's been something you've been carrying a lot of water on. Charlie. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize that was a water pun, but I did when I saw Charlie's face. <laughs> yeah, good one. Um, on October 6th, I attended my first Connecticut Water Company Advisory Council meeting. Um, that was held via Zoom. Uh, the Connecticut Water Company currently has about 221 employees. Uh, 105,000 customers and has spent $184 million since 2008 in infrastructure improvements. Um, their call center is still open. It has 10 employees working from home and they handle um, on average 460 calls a day. Uh, Connecticut Water Company is regulated by Pura, DPH and DEEP and the Connecticut Water Company has been offering customer assistance programs for those facing financial hardships due to the pandemic. Um, they currently have, um, are seeking, uh, they're filing for rate increases through the State Regulatory Commission. Um, they say they haven't raised their base rates since 2009. Um, I guess with the water company, what they have to do is actually spend money first on projects um, and then go to um, the regulatory commission in order to raise their rates to get that money back. Whereas a lot of companies or utilities, they raise their rates and then spend the money on programs. So I thought that was interesting. Um, they also offer lots of programs to um, grants to, to towns, which I know the fire departments um, have been recipients of in the past. Um, and they also do a lot of other um, community activities and programs. Not so much with COVID going on, but they said they'll be getting back on that once things get going again. On October 14th, I attended the police commission meeting. A moment of silence was held in honor of Betsy Burns, um, who had up until her death served on the police commission. She will be deeply missed um, by them and the town. She was a great service. Um, we know she was all struggling for, for quite a long time, but she's, she held commission meetings from a hospital bed right up um until the last minute so um we all are saddened to to hear of her passing um the police department says that they have again um received a request for making krasik road a one-way road um they said that this would require a study um and it would be very difficult due to the fact that the road actually crosses three different towns um, so getting all three towns to agree on this and do the studies, um, they think will be quite a challenge, but they're not dismissing the request. Um, they also discussed, if they further discussed um, the request for a crosswalk on South Water Street um, in the area of the park um, and the river area. Um, apparently uh, people have requested for a crosswalk in that area, but again, this is another big hurdle. Um, they say that it would require a study, um, engineering. It would require lots of money. There's, there's currently no sidewalks on either side of that street. 
Um, they're thinking that if a crosswalk was put in, it would have to be ADA compliant, which could be very difficult due to the pitch of the road there and the hills. Um, but again, it's something they're going to look at in the springtime because right now it would be hard to study the area and the pedestrian traffic um, going into this time of year. So they're going to wait until there's more activity at the park to see how much foot traffic there is in that area. Um, this year's Halloween will definitely be different with COVID still being active. However, like Jason said in his report, many events are still happening with the help of you know, added safety and lots of creativity. Um, Parks and Recs are still doing events. The Trolley Museum is still running its fall events. Um, so get out there, support, and um, that's all I have this, this week. Thanks, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Sarah? Yep. Um, on Saturday, October 3rd, Selectman Nordell and I joined David Stevens and other volunteers to stand easy to assemble child's desks and prepare them for delivery. These desks were donated and made by Desco Builders in Ellington and have been donated to students throughout East Windsor that need a desk to do their schoolwork from home. I know of 20 desks that were ordered and delivered to our social services department this week. Uh, there are more available. So if you know an East Windsor resident that is in need of a desk for a student to do their work at home, please contact the East Windsor Social Services Department. The Warehouse Point. Uh, Board of Fire Commissioners met on Monday, October 5th and Thursday, October 8th. Much of the discussion revolved around the two projects, the truck and the addition to Station 1 that have been approved for bonding and how the building committee would oversee the project as the process begins. There were 47 calls and 70 inspections conducted in the month of September. The Board of Fire Commissioners are currently reviewing their policies and procedures and their charter to comply with their Connecticut General Statute Chapter 105 status and operate more efficiently. On October 13th, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee met and received a Parks and Recreation presentation from Melissa Maltesi. Many of the projects discussed were the same as the previous year's requests. And Mrs. Maltesi mentioned the difficulty of being able to obtain quotes as vendors are hesitant to give the town new estimates for these projects as they are aware of us not funding them year after year. I brought these concerns up in our Board of Selectmen meeting on August 20th and I'm glad that we modified the verbiage in the new capital improvement planning policy to allow departments who run into this issue an option to provide other documentation to support their requests so they can still move forward with the process. Um, on October 14th, I did sign into that police commission meeting, which Selectman Nordell already reported on. Um, and I also um, would like to express my um, thoughts and prayers with Betsy Burns family as they grieve the loss of such a remarkable person. She was a true asset to our community. It was an honor to know her and I will hold her encouraging words over the years dear to my heart. Later that evening, the Board of Education met via Zoom. High school principal Allison Anderson gave a presentation updating the board on the happenings at East Windsor High School. Focus has been put on social emotional skills, connecting through circles while still maintaining social distancing. This week, freshmen and sophomores have been taking their PSATs and juniors and seniors their SATs. East Windsor High School will be participating in Unity Day, which will take place both on October 20th and October 21st. And students are encouraged to wear orange to express their unity. Mr. Kaplan discussed the exciting things going on in his automotive class. Students are using automotive expert software, which gives students the opportunity to incorporate real life situations into their work and to experience the cost analysis and writing reports of automotive repairs. Students are able to problem solve and conduct automotive repairs, such as giving an oil change, headlight replacement, brakes or even lawnmower or small engine repair. Um, they prepare the estimate, add for parts and labor and create and close out the repair order. 
if you're interested in having the students help diagnose your problem with your automobile or small engine, um, please contact Mr. Kaplan um, at skaplan at ewct.org to schedule an opening. The district has the opportunity to apply for a $477,000 Alliance Capital Grant. This application is due by the end of October, and if the district is so fortunate to receive this money, areas such as upgrading their network or their HVAC systems are being considered. We did have our first positive COVID-19 case in the school district, and Dr. DeBarge discussed that the process went as expected. The district is hoping to have students back four days a week with students with the highest needs and students without internet access returning first, um, hopefully beginning next Monday. This will, um, there will be intervals adding grade levels back into the building and the district hopes to add groups of students back in every two weeks. The goal is to get all students back into the building before Thanksgiving with the last group of students starting around November 16th. Once a full grade is back into the building full time, a hybrid model will no longer be offered. Students will need to be back in school for the four days or they may choose to opt out. Precautions such as assigned seating on the bus and loading from back to front will be taken due to the increase in number of students and allow for contact tracing if necessary. There is a survey going around to parents to see if students are going to come back at this time. Our current statistics include 90% of students want to continue using the model that they are currently using. 35% of students have opted out and are doing distance learning all four days. And 40 students are choosing to be homeschooled. The district is having a difficult time getting substitute teachers as are other districts and at times it may be challenging to have coverage. Um, and finally, I'm excited to partner with Julie Gelsimino, who is a certified yoga instructor here in town for a Purple Out Yoga Night to honor domestic violence survivors and raise awareness. This socially distanced class will be held um, outside at her home on October 25th from 6 p.m. to 7.30. The cost is $10 per person and it will be donated directly to the Network Against Domestic Abuse and Julie Safe House. The network is also in need of new yoga mats for their trauma-based yoga class and grocery store gift cards to be used for necessities. Um, please contact me if you'd like to reserve a spot or you need any more information or would like to make a donation. Thank you. Okay. Um, we're now on to the second opportunity for public participation. Are there any members of the public who would like to address the board? Any members of the public who would like to address the board? Seeing none, uh, we will have an executive session. If I could have a motion to enter into that. Make a motion we go into executive session. Is there a second? Second. Marie D'Souza. Made and seconded. Um, all in favor? Selectman Baker. Selectman Baker votes in the affirmative. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Okay. We're going to go into executive session at 745. Um, Peg, I do expect uh, at least one vote, if not two, when we come out. So check the recording um, in the morning if you could. Okay. Sounds All right. good. Have a great night. Thank you. Thanks. It's 8.33. We're coming out of executive session, reconvening the regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Um, we, do have, we do have an item for discussion, um, and that is a motion pertaining to a potential settlement with LSE, Lodestar Energy. Uh, Selectman Baker. I'd like to make a motion to accept the recommendation of the town's council to fully and final settle, finally settle the pending assessment tax appeal known as LSE Keynes. It's too small. Benetiche. Say again. Benetiche. 
got it, LLC at all versus the town of East Windsor, docket number CV-19-605278. Uh, dash S as follows. One, exempt the subject personal property solar panels located at 80 and 90 Wapping Road pursuant to Connecticut General Statute second, Section 12B1 7D as of the 2018 grant list to establish and set the value of the subject tax parcels for 80 and 90 Wapping Road upon which the personal property is located as of the 2018 grant list. Three, establish and set the mill rate for calculating the real estate taxes owed on said tax parcels, parcels as of the 2018 grant list. Four, any resultant overpayment of personal property taxes determined as a result of the exemption shall be applied as a credit to the real estate tax bills for the subject parcels located at 80 and 90 Wapping Road. And five, authorize the first selectman to negotiate and finalize an agreement with the plaintiffs that includes and memorializes the above based on mutually agreeable terms and conditions. Thank you, Selectman Baker. Is there a second? Maurice was a second that. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. So carried. Uh, I have no further business to come before the Board of Selectmen this evening. Uh, motion would be in order to adjourn unless any other members have anything. Motion to adjourn. Motion has been made by Alan. Is there a second? <clears throat> Second. Seconded by Sarah. It's non-debatable. Selectman Baker. Aye. Selectman Nordell. Aye. Selectman D'Souza. Aye. Selectman Muska. Aye. All right, we are adjourned at 8.36. Thank you, folks. Have a good night.